In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, good evening. And, and welcome to University Community Presbyterian Church. If you are a visitor here, we want to know, we want you to know that you are welcome and we want to know who you are. And so there are yellow cards in the back of the pew in front of you that you can put in your name and address so that we can contact you just, say, just to say hello and we're glad you were here with us. So tonight is a service of lessons and carols. We will be reading scripture from the Bible describing some of God's interaction with humanity from the beginning of time and the beginning literally of existence right up to the fullness of time that Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, joined humanity on earth as an infant to live the life that shows us how to live, to die the cruel death that gives believers life eternal, to be resurrected from the grave and ultimately raised into heaven where Jesus awaits his coming again. It is God whose human birth we celebrate tonight. God who welcomes you. We will be receiving a joy gift the the National Church, the PCUSA Church's offering uh, at this time of year is called the Joy Gift Offering, and it um, benefits retired and active church workers in financial need, and it also supports racial ethnic schools. We do not have child care this evening available, but if you would like to use a quiet room, I love kid noises, so don't feel like you have to take your kids out, but if you want to, there is a quiet room back there that you can go to if you wish. And lastly, I want to say thank you to all the people. There are going to be a lot of people up here tonight. And I want to say thank you to all of you who have agreed to participate tonight. Would you pray with me, please? God of all, we come as you're faithful to Bethlehem on this silent night. We come to gather around the manger and see for ourselves this wondrous thing of which we have heard. We come to worship the baby born to be a king. Make us worthy to receive your gift of grace, O God. And when we leave this place, may we be a people renewed in our faith to give your gift of love and peace to each person we meet as it was given to us so long ago. Alleluia. Amen. And now if you would please remain seated and join in singing Angels from the Realms of Glory number 143 or the words will be up on the screen.
be over here. Right here. Right here. Over, here. Yeah. over each of the past four weeks, we have lit a candle. First, it was a candle of peace. Then we added a candle of hope. Then a candle of joy. And then a candle of love. Even as the days have darkened, adding a little bit of light week by week as we journeyed through Advent. Tonight, we continue that journey, remembering God's original creation and our fall, remembering the covenant promise to Abraham, bringing to mind the words of the prophets, all of it recounting of the journey God's people have been on since the beginning. We're working on it. You want to have me with this one? We're going to do this one. Let's go. Okay, you ready? Okay, finally, later in the service, we will light our candles from the Christ candle to celebrate the good news that in the fullness of time, God <laughs> sent the Messiah to save all humanity. As our candles burn tonight, let us rejoice with all of God's people who continue the journey and celebrate our coming of King Jesus Christ, our Lord. Okay, thank you. Please stand as you are able and join in singing, O Come All Ye Faithful, found on page 133 of the Glory to God hymnal or on the screen.
Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord as God was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? The man answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And God said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman put he, you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. second lesson. <clears throat> the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed me. Please stand if you're able and sing uh, carol number 50, on page 115, Away in the Manger. <laughs> Thank you. 
may be seated. The third lesson. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
the fourth lesson. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrata, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. If you, uh, hmm. It's Sarah's turn. I got it.
fifth lesson. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be? since I am a virgin. The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. And now if you would please stand as you are able and sing number 113 from the hymnal, Angels We Have Heard on High, the words will be on the screen.
The offering tonight is designated for the National Church's Christmas Joy Offering, half of which benefits retired and active church workers with particular financial needs. The other half benefits racial, ethnic high schools and colleges. Offerings may be placed in the plates at the entrances to the sanctuary. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. In grateful thanksgiving, let us bring our gifts and offerings to the Lord. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, please receive the gifts we offer that they may give hope, peace, joy, and love to the retired and current Presbyterian church workers who find themselves in need of financial assistance, and to racial, ethnic Presbyterian high schools and colleges that they may continue to educate and nurture future leaders to serve our world. We pray this in the name of the babe in the manger, Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. The sixth lesson. This is how the birth of Jesus of the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. 
But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give a birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Seventh lesson. <clears throat> In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee, to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told, of us, told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Please stand as you are comfortable and uh, sing while shepherds watch their flocks on page 118 in the pew hymnal or on the screen.
seated. One of the problems with preaching on Christmas Eve is that everyone knows the story. Mary and Joseph, no room at the inn, a baby born in a cave stable, shepherds, angels. We know it well, or at least we think we do. We come to church on Christmas Eve expecting to see Jesus in the manger, and we're happy about that. Who doesn't love babies, right? Who doesn't love this scene? But the truth of the story is, and what we often miss, is that there were people threatened by the real baby Jesus right after he was born. Matthew tells of the story of Herod the Great, who was so threatened by the possibility of a rival to his throne that he ordered all the babies in Bethlehem under two years old to be taken from their cribs and killed. And while Luke's story, which we just read, is not as violent, the story starts with Caesar Augustus the self-proclaimed divine ruler of the Roman Empire, ordering a census. Augustus doesn't know that Jesus, the Messiah, God's anointed king, had been born in Bethlehem. But had he known, he would certainly have made sure that this Bethlehem baby did not see adulthood. <coughs> what Herod knew and Augustus would have known this baby is dangerous. But why? Why is this baby so dangerous? This God child who was born in the postcard manger scene will grow up and be a threat to the status quo, a threat to those who wield power through force of arms or the force of their bank accounts. He will expose the inner thoughts of human hearts and call people to a way of living beyond themselves. He will talk about a God who is intimately involved in public, in politics, and with people, rather than a God who is merely private, spiritual, and quiet. Jesus will preach about a kingdom that has nothing to do with power, wealth, or military might, but everything to do with servanthood, sacrifice, and suffering. He will spend his time eating and associating with people on the margins of society, the sick, the poor, the outcast, the prostitute, the tax collector, all while rebuking the religious, the elite, the insiders. Jesus will challenge the powers of sin and death by taking them on directly, all the way to the cross. You can't defeat someone who wants nothing from the world, who practices what he preaches, and who is willing to die while forgiving his tormentors. Such a person is dangerous to the status quo. Interestingly, the world seems to get this, but many Christians do not. We want Jesus to stay right where he is, right here with us. We want a Jesus who stays within our own set of boundaries, a Jesus whom we can keep privately and quietly on display at church. But do we ignore him the rest of the week? We want a Jesus who matches our expectations and who blesses our political agendas. But do we seek a personal Jesus who orbits around us and our purposes and our needs? 
We want a baby Jesus we can cuddle and admire rather than the living and active Jesus who cares less about our religious expectations than he does about the whole world's redemption. The truth is, we who claim Jesus must actually go a step further and let him run loose in our lives. This manger-born baby, God's word made flesh, came to change the world and us right along with it. God's goodness and love is poured out to us in Jesus. And when that love runs loose in us, then it will find its way outward in good works toward others. We receive the gift and then we pass it on. We don't hold on to Jesus. We share Jesus with the world. There are many Herods and Augustuses in this world who do not know love. They only know power. Like Jesus, we are to love them anyway. So here's the deal. Jesus just wants to be followed. That might be dangerous because if we do follow him, he will take us out among those who need the gift of his love the most. People who clamor for attention. People who are angry at the world and angry at God. People who are broken and have no happy in their holidays. It's a love that's dangerous because it calls us to risk ourselves in service to the world. But that's where Jesus' love goes toward those who know no love. <laughs> the prophet Isaiah was right. A little child shall lead them. One who is born not only to be admired in a manger, but to a wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. <clears throat> the eighth lesson. <clears throat> After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will, be shepherd, who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
the ninth lesson. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into be being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born, not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and and truth. Now, if you would please stand as you are able and sing Joy to the World. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I ask that you please remain standing and aware of your candle, tipping your unlighted candle to the flame, and then hold your candle straight up and down so the next person can light their candles from yours. The bell choir will play through Silent Night one time, and then we will all join in singing at the first verse. And as we continue to sing the following verses, I'll release each row by row, starting from the front.
place proclaiming that we have seen the glory of God, believing that there is a light that shines in the darkness, which darkness shall never overcome. Alleluia. Amen. Merry Christmas. You may blow them out if you wish. <laughs> I get it. It goes to the bonus.